Good morning. Hi, welcome to the uh, Path of Wildness Meditation for August 3rd, 2016. Sorry, I just had a uh, cancer burned off my, you know, little pre-cancer thing burned off my nose. It's a little sensitive right now, so if I touch my nose. Um, anyway, the Path of Wildness is a, a, a walk of equanimity, balanced movement through life, uh, consisting of three objectives and seven principles. The three objectives are as follows. One, the development and maintenance of good, sound principles. These uh, principles are the uh, guidelines through which uh, we operate our lives. And these are in fact the seven principles I'll go over in with. I'll go over in just a moment. These principles are uh, developed through uh, the process of living, reading, conversing, arguing, and uh, basically using our uh, reason to understand the world. Uh, and I recommend you uh, develop them as much as possible on your own, although it's okay to borrow and lift from uh, elsewhere, because. In fact, there's not a lot of new thoughts necessarily, but the main thing is that they need to be vetted out by your own thought process. And uh, the next principle is the, uh, or the next objective is the uh, uh, management of our emotions such that uh, uh, we can uh, have good emotional reactions. So when events of life occur, excuse me, things happen that we didn't expect, changes uh, transpire uh, we don't these don't ambush us and cause us to leap into uh, emotional responses part of me to that end there are these things called pre-passions it's far from stoics what is going on pre-passions are the the initial fluster that you feel when something happens and then the full-on passions when you uh, passions occur when you run with that and uh, you, you feel that emotion rising and you run and let it become more. So what we want to do is to be cognizant to when those pre-passions are rising and then uh, do something smart and, more, and uh, manage better the emotions rather than just simply uh, racing off with them. I've only got one good example that I use. I use it over and over and I need to think of more. The example is that uh, someone cuts in front of me in the car while I'm driving and the pre-passion rises the initial anger, you know, and then, and then, you know, whether or not I choose to run with that and uh, perform some road rage and catch up and flip them off or whatever, or uh, whether I, I choose to instead to, uh, to settle that down, to uh, rise above that emotion and uh, maintain my cool, so to speak. That's the difference between uh, running with your emotions and managing your emotions. It doesn't necessarily have to mean bottling it up, although I haven't quite figured out you know, I've, I've gotten over that bias that uh, could, that not expressing your emotions just leads to, uh, you know, their expression later. So it's, it's a bias that I have, you know, that serenity now, insanity later, uh, from borrow from Seinfeld. I haven't quite figured out if that's really true or not. I don't think it is. I think that you do need to release it, but I don't know. I don't even know if you do. Is that just a bias that I have? So uh, what is going on with that truck up there? Strange, strange. So the um, the next one is the uh, the next principle is the uh, uh, our next objective is to perform good actions through the course of our lives to live a good life to live a, to live as a good uh, member of our species and you know citizen of our planet so to speak. Sounds so cliche, and that's by to by living according to the principles that we uh, develop. So. Uh, now there are other principles, let's get on to that. The uh, first is the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces, flowing and changing and never transforming. What was here yesterday, something else today, and quite again different tomorrow. Keeping that in mind will uh, help us to remember that, uh, to, to not be surprised when change, when, when, uh, change occurs, or, uh, and also to uh, take action when, uh, the moment, when the moment and opportunity uh, uh, arise, make a will the sunshine, so to speak. Second is the uh, principle of uh, nature, uh, describing that everything in the universe, animate and inanimate, has a particular nature, and that our best lives are lived uh, in recognition of what our nature is and in recognition of the nature of others. That's an important part that I haven't really stressed until now, the nature of others. Interesting. I'm dealing with some uh, spammers well, not spammers, but some uh, very, uh, how would you describe them? Almost like a trolls on Facebook as we talk politics. And uh, 
their responses are always, uh, you know, hyperbola at the outer edge, and propaganda, very emotional. Having a hard time figuring out how to best deal with those people without necessarily dismissing them outright, which may be the right way to do it. But anyway, I digress. That may be just their nature. And then to recognize that, help me to not get upset at them when they behave in accordance with their nature. And it may indeed be the right thing to just simply dismiss them and let them go off and do their thing. Not get upset. See how that kind of works? I, yeah, I'm, I'm sounding like I'm teaching you, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning this myself. But I learned that instruction helps me, helps me to understand, to pretend as though I understand. <laughs> not to pretend, but to act out and live as though I live according to the principles that, that I want to live to live by, right? I, I totally know. I'm off in the weeds now. Let me come back. Because I tend to run out of time with this video. The uh, next principle is, uh, and the next objective is to simply live a good life. Oh, wait, no, I'm already talking about that. So I'm, I'm up to the third principle. The third principle is the social principle. Human beings are social animals. We live best when we uh, are working for the common good of our species and our, our family, our group. <laughs> And our planet. The next is the principle of uh, temperance and uh, controlling our emotions. Remember before I was talking about not running away with uh, free passions? Well, that extends to a lot of different things. For example, uh, eating too much is running away with a, 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 an emotion in a way, a desire. Uh, sleeping too much, working too much, playing too much, making love too much, anything at all that you indulge in. Is, uh, is running away with a feeling in a way. And uh, so temperance is the control of our consumption. And I'll argue that uh, the mere exercise of temperance is a virtue in itself because it disciplines us to self towards self-control. That to indulge uh, offers no immediate or, uh, tac or tangible virtue in itself. So temperance is a very valuable thing. In fact, it's the uh, key to uh, walking the path. The key to be, it's the execution element of it. The next principle is the principle of indifference, or as I call it, the great indifference. The universe doesn't care. It simply looks, it doesn't even look on. It's simply there. If you want to find care and compassion, look to your fellow human beings, maybe your pets, and for the most part, the, the rest of it is indifferent to our our, our life or death or well-being. Just go out into nature and uh, you'll, you'll discover the uh, great indifference. If you feel something else talking at you, I offer that it's probably you're talking to yourself. No one's ever been able to come up with any evidence that they're actually talking to anything else. Thus the, the, the requirement for faith for such things. The next principle is the principle of uh, uh, reason. Sixth principle. Reason is the governing faculty. It's what we use to make sense of the world. We uh, collect facts. We observe the world. We uh, uh, make note of what is what is a, you know, really happening out there. This is, these are not arguments. These are just observations of what is what is what is true. Gravity pulls down. The sun is the sun is warm. Yeah. Day follows night. Night follows day. Things like that. Those are facts. What we do with that then is we can then use those facts to construct uh, arguments about the world, to make statements about what happens, to make predictions about uh, the future. And if those predictions hold true, then uh, we've learned something and we have something real that is uh, founded on evidence. Let's say, for example, we observe that uh, day follows night and then night in turn follows day, and on and on it goes. We can uh, then observe that, uh, that uh, well, what do we observe? I knew I would go down that one. So we have a fact, but we can construct an argument based on that fact. Can I? Can I construct an argument based on the fact that day follows night and night follows day? I guess the conclusion is that uh, I can't. <laughs> Yeah. Day follows night, and night follows day. 
So if I was to make a syllogism, a premise, my, a major premise, minor premise, and a conclusion, major premise would be that uh, I don't know. I can't. I can't build an argument out of that. Day follows night, and night follows day. There's just not enough, I think, to, to do anything with. You can all you can do is a, you can just make the observation. That's well, it's just a fact. I'm not. That's the problem. I'm just dealing with the fact. I'm not trying to state something about it. I could state something, for example, that the sun. Look, okay, I can make a. I can make a conclusion that the sun goes around the earth. The sun goes around the earth. And I can say, if the major premise is that uh, observing something, objects that pass through the sky at a regular interval, I can't do that. So no, I can't. So I guess well, I just have to leave it at that. Bad example to go down that road. Got to clearly. I need to work on my ability to uh, to reason. I got myself into a hole there. Anyway, you know. Can't think of anything. Really came to a dead end. Good example of hmm. just have to leave it at that. Anyway, reason, and I've done better, but I just uh, for at uh, this moment I seem to have to be at a loss. Reason is the ability to construct, to make observations, to construct the construct arguments based on those observations that then make predictions. And if those predictions come true. Or sure, true. Then you found something that, that is at least at this moment real, and you hold on to it until evidence proves it otherwise. But I can't give you a good example. And then finally, uh, virtue. Virtue is the uh, purpose of life. Pur uh, virtue is the result. It it stems from walking the path of wildness, living a life where you recognize that things are transitory. That things that change change is constant, and and and, and cut, that things come to an end, and new things begin. That uh, everything has a particular nature, and it's worthwhile to find, discover that nature, and living according, live according to it. That uh, social ends are are the best ends possible. That uh, temperance is a virtue, is a, is a shortcut to virtue. That uh, the great indifference is uh, the fact of the universe, which appears to be uh, uh, utterly without concern for our well-being. That uh, oh, reason is the arbiter of truth. Um, and that's it. That's the path of wildness. A difficult path of wildness meditation for the day. Challenging, for sure. Okay, that's it, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.